2 Kings, starting with chapter 17, Hosea reigns. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. He did that which was evil in the sight of mighty God Ahia, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant, and he gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to So king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. The ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of Medes. But so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against mighty God Ahiah, their El Elohi, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom mighty God Ahiah cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the king of Israel which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against mighty God Ahiah their El Elohi. And they built themselves high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom mighty God Ahia carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke mighty God Ahia to anger. For they serve idols, whereof mighty God Ahia had said unto them, You shall not do this thing. Yet mighty God Ahia testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn you from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the law which I commanded you, commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden their necks, like to the neck of their fathers, that did not believe in mighty God Ahia, their El Elohi. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom mighty God Ahiah had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of mighty God Ahiah their Elohi and made them molten images even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, and used divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of mighty God Ahia, to provoke, to provoke him to anger. Therefore Ahia was very angry with Israel, and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of mighty God Ahiah, their, his, their El Elohi, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And mighty God Ahiah rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drave Israel from following mighty God Ahiah, and made them sin a great sin. But the children of Israel walked in all the sin of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them. 
And to mighty God Ahiah remove Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, and from Kutha, and from Ava, and from Hamath, and from Sepharim, and the place then in the city of Samaria, instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria, and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there, that they feared not mighty God Ahiah. Therefore mighty God Ahiah sent a lion among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of mighty God Ahiah of the land. Therefore he had sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of mighty God Ahiah of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom you brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of mighty God Ahiah of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear mighty God Ahiah. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own, and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sukkot, Benad, and the men of Kuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashma. Asher, Ashima, and the Av, Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sephirvites burnt their children in fire to Adramalak and Anamalak, the gods of Sephirvarim. So they feared mighty God Ahiah and made unto themselves of lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared mighty God Ahiah and served their own gods, after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. And to this day they do after the former manners. They fear not mighty God Ahiah, neither do they after their statutes, or after their ordinances, or after the law and the commandments which mighty God Ahiah commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel with whom Ahiah had made a covenant, and charged them, saying, You shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. The mighty God Ahiah, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall you fear, and him shall you worship, and to him shall you do sacrifice. And the statutes, and the ordinances, and the law, and the commandments, which he wrote for you, you shall observe to do forevermore, and you shall not fear other gods. The commandment that I have made with you, you shall not forget, neither shall you fear other gods. But Ahiah your El Elohi you shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared Ahiah and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. Chapter 18 Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of mighty God Ahiah, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places, and brake the images, and cut down the groves, and brake in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, 
and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in mighty God Ahia, El Elohi of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to mighty God Ahia, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which mighty God Ahia commanded Moses. And mighty God Ahia was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. He smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza, and the borders thereof, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, the Shalmaazer, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of three years they took it, even in the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. The king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria, and put them in Hala, and in Habor, by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes, because they obeyed not the voice of mighty God Ahiah their El Elohi, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moses, the servant of mighty God Ahiah, commanded, and would not hear them nor do them. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, the Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria, to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Return from me, that which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of mighty God Ahiah, and in the treasurers of the king's house. That time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of mighty God Ahiah, and from the pillars which Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid, and gave it to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rab Rapsaurus and Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fuller's field. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of Esab the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak you now to Hezekiah. Thus said the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me. Now behold, thou trusted upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand, and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust on him. But if you say unto me, We trust in Ahiah, our El Elohi, is not that he whose high places and whose altar Hezekiah had taken away and had said to Judah and Jerusalem, You shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Now therefore I pray thee, give pledges to my lord the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen. <clears throat> am I now come up, <clears throat> excuse me, am I now come up without my God Ahia against this place to destroy it? Mighty God Ahia said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah and Shebna, and Joah, until Rebshekah, speak, I pray thee, 
to thy servant in the Syrian language. But we understand it and talk not with us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. <clears throat> Excuse me. But Rabshakeh said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Had he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language, and spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus said the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in Ahia, saying, Ahia will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus said the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and then eat you every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink you every one the waters of his own cistern. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, and a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil and of honey, that you may live and not die. And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuaded you, saying, Ahia will deliver us. Had any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and of Orpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvarim, Hina, and Ava? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of my hand, that Ahias should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But the people held their peace, and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe. And Joah, the son of Esau, the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. Chapter 19 And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes, and covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of mighty God Ahiah. And he sent Eliakim, which was over the household, and Shabna the scribe. And the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke and blasphemy for me, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be, mighty God Ahiah, thy El Elohi will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria has master, has sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which mighty God Ahiah thy El Elohi had heard. Wherefore lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall you say to your master, Thus says Ahiah, mighty God, be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And when he heard say of Tohaka, king of Ethiopia, Behold, he is come out to fight against thee. He sent messengers again unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the king of Assyria have done to all lands, by destroying them utterly, and shall thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? 
is Gozan and Haran and Rezef and the children of Eden, which were in Velasor. Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Orpath and the king of the city of Sepharvaram and Hina and Ava? And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of mighty God Ahiah and spread it before Ahiah. And Hezekiah prayed before mighty God Ahiah and said, O mighty God Ahiah, El Elohi of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art mighty God, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Ahiah, bow down thine ear and hear, Open high thine eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which had sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, mighty God Ahiah, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hand, wood and stone, before they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Ahiah, mighty God, El Elohi, of Israel, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art Ahiah, mighty God, even thou only. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says Ahiah, mighty God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that mighty God Ahiah has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice, and lifted up thine eyes on high? Even against the Holy One of Israel. By thy messengers thou hast reproached Ahiah, mighty God, and hast said, with the multitude of my chariots I am come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof. And I will enter into the lodgings of his borders, and into the forests of his Carmel. I have digged a dung, a drunk strange waters, and with the sole of my feet I have dried up all the rivers of besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that thou shouldest be to lay waste fenced cities into ruinous heaps? Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field and as the green herd, as the grass on the house tops and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know thy abroad, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me, because thy rage against me, and thy tumult is come up into mine ears. Therefore I will put my hook in thy nose, and my brittle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. And this shall be a sign unto thee, you should eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year that which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow you and reap, and plant vineyard, and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward, and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they shall escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of Ahiah, of hosts, shall do this. Therefore thus says Ahiah concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, he shall not come into the city, said Ahiah. For I would defend this city to save it, for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that night that the angel of mighty God Ahiah went out and smote in the camp of Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, 
there were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adramelech and Sharizar his son smote him with the sword. And they escaped into the land of Ar Armenia, and Azarhaddon, his son, reigned in his stead. Chapter 20 In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says Ahiah, mighty God, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto mighty God Ahiah, saying, I beseech thee, O my king Ahiah, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass of four. Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of mighty God Ahiah came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus says Ahiah, the El Elohi of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of Ahiah, mighty God. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And, I, and Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign? that mighty God Ahiah will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of mighty God Ahiah the third day. And Isaiah said, This sign shall thou have of mighty God Ahiah, that Ahiah will do the thing that he had spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees, nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees? And Hezekiah the prophet cried out, Mighty God Ahiah, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. At that time, Baradakabaladan, the son of Baal Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah heard, hearkened unto them, and showed them all that house of his precious thing, the silver and the gold, and the spices, and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in this house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto king Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of mighty God Ahiah. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store, and to this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, said mighty God Ahiah. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of Ahiah, mighty God, which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good? If peace and truth be in my days, the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and Manasseh his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 21 Manasseh's Reign 
Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign, and reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah, and he did that which was evil in the sight of mighty God Ahiah, after the abominations of the heathen, whom mighty God Ahiah cast out before the children of Israel. But he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahab king of Israel and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of mighty God Ahiah, of which Ahiah said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of Ahiah, mighty God. And he made his son pass through the fire, and observe times, and use enchantments, and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of Ahiah to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house of which mighty God Ahiah said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers. Only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearkened not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom mighty God Ahiah destroyed before the children of Israel. And mighty God Ahiah spake by his servants the prophets, saying, because Manasseh king of Judah had done these abominations and had done wickedly above all that the Amorites did which were before him and had made Judah also to sin with his idols. Therefore thus said mighty God Ahiah, Elohi of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem, the line of Samaria, and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance, and deliver them into the hand of their enemies, and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies, because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger, since today their fathers came forth out of the Egypt even unto this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much, till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, beside his sin wherewith he made Judah to sin, and doing that which was evil in the sight of mighty God Ahiah. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, and all that he did, and his sin that he sinned, were they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Uzzah, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon was twenty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Haruz of Jatbah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of mighty God Ahiah, as his father Manasseh did. And he walked in all the way that his father walked, in and served the idols that his father served, and worshipped them. And he forsook mighty God Ahiah, and little he of his fathers, and walked in, not in the way of Ahiah, mighty God. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him, and slew the king in his own house. The people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon and the people of the land of jo Josiah, his son, king in his stead. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, were they not written in a book of the Chronicles of the king of Judah? He was buried in his sepulcher in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah, his son, reigned in his stead. Chapter 22. Josiah becomes king. 
Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adaiah of Bozkath. And he did that which was right in the sight of mighty God Ahiah, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And it came to pass in the eighteenth year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshalem, the scribe to the house of Ahiah, saying, Go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of Ahiah, which the keepers of the door had gathered of the people, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doors of the work that have the oversight of the house of Ahiah, and let them give it to the doors of the work which is in the house of Ahiah to repair the breaches of the house, and to carpenters and builders and masons, and to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. Howbeer there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shephan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of mighty God Ahiah. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shephan, and he read it. And Shephan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again, and said, Thy servants have gathered thee the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of mighty God Ahiah. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest had delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Ahiakam the son of Shaphan, and Achbor the son of Micaiah, the Sh and Shaphan the scribe, and Ahasiha, I'm sorry, Asiah, a servant of the king's, saying, Go you inquire of mighty God Ahiah for me, and for the people of, and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of mighty God Ahiah that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. So Hilkiah the priest, and Ahakam, and Achbor, and Shaphan, and Ahasaha, Ahasiah, went unto Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shulam, the son of Tikvah, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. And she said to them, Thus says mighty God Ahiah, El Elohi of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus said Ahiah, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof even all the words of the book which the king of Judah had read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they, may, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah which sent you to inquire of Ahiah, thus shall you say to him, Thus says Ahiah, mighty God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before Ahiah when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they shouldest become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, said Ahiah. Behold, therefore I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Chapter 23 And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. The king 
went up into the house of mighty god Ahiah, and all the men of judah and all the inhabitants of jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people both small and great and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of mighty god Ahiah. the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before mighty god Ahiah to walk after mighty god Ahiah and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant and the king commanded hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of mighty god Ahiah, all the vessels that were made for baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven and he burned them without jerusalem in the fields of kidron and carried the ashes of them unto bethel and he put down the adulterous priest whom the kings of judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of judah and in the places round about jerusalem them also that burned incense to baal to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven and he brought out the grove from the house of mighty god Ahiah without jerusalem into the brook kidron and burned it at the brook kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people and he brake down the houses of the sodomites that were by the house of mighty god Ahiah where the women rove hangings for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah, and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense, from Geba to Beersheba, and brake down the high places of the gates, that were in the entering in of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of mighty God Ahiah in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnon, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire of Molech, or to pass through the fire to Molech. And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of mighty god Ahiah, by the chamber of nathan melech the chamberlain which was in the suburbs and burned the chariots of the sun with fire the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of ahaz which the kings of judah had made and the altars which manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of mighty god Ahiah did the king beat down and break them down from thence, and cast the dust of them into the brook Kindron. The high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon the king of Israel had built for Asherah, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abominations of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the, abom the abominations of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he brake in pieces the images, and cut down the groves, and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, and the high places which Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, had made both that altar and the high place he brake down, and burned the high place, and stamped it small to powder, and burned the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchres that were there in the mount, and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchres, and burned them upon the altar, and polluted it, according to the word of mighty God Ahiah, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, What title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the sepulchre of the men of God, which came from Judah, and proclaim these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, Let him alone, 
Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones along with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke mighty God Ahiah to anger, Josiah took away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars, and burned men's bones upon them, and returned to Jerusalem. The king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto mighty God Ahiah your El Elohi, as it is written in the book of this covenant. Surely there was not Moholden such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Judah. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was holding to mighty God Ahiah in Jerusalem. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits, and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, did Josiah put away, that he might perform the words of the law, which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of mighty God Ahiah. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to mighty God Ahiah with all his heart, and with all his soul, and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. Notwithstanding, mighty God Ahiah turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, where with his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him withal. And mighty God Ahiah said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, and will cast off this city Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah, and all that he did, were they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? In his days, Pharaoh, Noka, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria, to the river Euphrates, and King Josiah went against him. And he slew him at Medgiddo, when he had seen him. And his servants carried him in a chariot dead from Megiddo, and brought him to Jerusalem, and buried him in his own sepulchre. The people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him, and made him king in his father's stead. Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Limna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of mighty God Ahiah, according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Necho put him in bands at Riblah, in the land of Ramah, that he might not reign in Jerusalem, and put the land to a tribute of an hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah king in the room of Josiah his father, and turned his name to Jehoiakim, and took Jehoiakim, uh, Jehoahaz, away, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but the tax the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land, of every one according to his taxation to give it unto Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zabada, the daughter of Peraiah of Ramah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of mighty God Ahiah, according to all that his fathers had done. Chapter 24 in his days Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. Mighty God Ahiah sent against him bands of the Chaldees and bands of the Syrians, 
and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it. According to the word of mighty God Ahiah, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. Surely at the commandment of mighty God Ahiah came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight, for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did, and also for the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with the innocent blood, which mighty God Ahiah would not pardon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, and all that he did, were they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah. So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin his son reigned in his stead. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Egypt unto the river Euphrates all that pertained to the king of Egypt. Jehoiachin was eighteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of mighty God Ahiah, according to all that his father had done. At that time the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city and his servants did besiege it. And Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. And he carried out thence all the treasurers of the house of mighty God Ahiah, and the treasurers of the king's house, and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon king of Israel had made in the temple of mighty God Ahiah, as mighty God Ahiah had said. And he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of Valor, even ten thousand captives, and all the craftsmen and smiths. None remained save the poorest sort of the people of the land. And he carried away Jehoiakim to Babylon, and the king's mother, and the king's wives, and his officers, and the mighty of the land, those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. And all the men of might, even seven thousand, and craftsmen and smiths, a thousand all that were strong and apt for war, even them the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah, his father's brother, king in his stead, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was twenty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamatal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Lebna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of mighty God Ahiah, according to all that Jehoiakim his had done. But through the anger of mighty God Ahiah, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah until he had cast him out from his presence that Jedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Chapter 25 And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came he and all his host against Jerusalem, and pinched against it. And they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine veiled in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. The city was broken up, and all the men of war fled, by night, by the way of the gate between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldees were against the city round about. The king went the way toward the plain. The army of the Chaldees pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up 
to the king of Babylon, to Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with fetters of brass, and carried him to Babylon. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of king Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, Nebu, sorry, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of mighty God Ahiah, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burnt he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city, and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon with the remnant of the multitude did Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carry away. But the captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen. The pillars of brass that were in the house of mighty God Ahiah, and the bases and the bracens sea that was in the house of mighty God Ahiah did the Chaldees break in pieces, and carried the brass of them to Babylon. The pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the spoons and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered took they away. And the fire pans and the bowls and such things as were of gold in gold, and of silver in silver, the captain of the guard took away. The two pillars, one sea, and the basis which Solomon made for the house of mighty God Ahiah, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. The height of one pillar was eighteen cubits, and the chapiter, chapiter upon it was brass, and the height of the chapiter three cubits. And the wreathen work and the pomegranates upon the chapter round about all of brass, and like unto these had the second pillar with wreathen work. The captain of the guard took Seraiah the chief priest, and Zephaniah the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the men of war and five men of them that were in the king's presence, which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, which mustered the people of the land, and threescore men of the people of the land that were found in the city, and Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry, Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, took these, and brought them to the king of Babylon to Rebla. The king of Babylon smote them, and slew them at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Judah was carried away out of their land. And as for the people that remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left, even over them he made Gedaliah, the son of Ahakam, the son of Shephan, ruler. And when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor, they came to Gedaliah to Mizpah, even Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, and Johanan the son of Kariah, and Sarahiah the son of Tanhameh, the Netophathite, and Jehazaniah the son of Maacathite, they and their men. And Gedaliah swore to them and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be the servants of the Chaldees. Dwell in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with thee. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, came, and ten men with him, and smote Gedaliah, that he died and the Jews and the Chaldees that were with him at Mizpah. And all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldees. And it came to pass in the seventh 
and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, excuse me, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, out of prison. And he spake kindly to him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon. And he changed his prison garments, and he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king, a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. And that's the end of Second Kings. Thank you for listening.